Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Ultimate General American Revolution, a early access game uh, by Game Labs, uh, currently kind of in a closed early access. You gotta buy it through Game Labs website directly. It's not on Steam, that won't happen until next year. Uh, but we are playing through episode number nine, I believe it is, of our Let's Play series. Uh, and right now, things have gone reasonably well, but uh, we're in a tricky situation in our Let's Play series playing as the Americans. We have driven up in sort of western New York, took Fort Ticonderoga in a horrifically bloody battle, just fought a small battle near Saratoga, defeating a small British regiment, uh, which was trying to kind of do an end around on Fort Ticonderoga. But the enemy now has over 2,000 troops here at Fort Frederick, just north of Ticonderoga. We have uh, maybe 1,000 troops between Saratoga and Ticonderoga to counter them, which might be enough given the strength of Ticonderoga, but um, it's a dicey situation that we find ourselves in. Our financial situation is bad. We are bleeding money. And we also do not have the ability, I don't think, uh, to really do much about that in the short term. So we're kind of, you know, we're we're scavenging together, selling resources, selling things to try and fund the revolution. But it's not going terribly well on a financial point of view. We don't have enough recruits right now with the current uh, money situation to replenish our losses. Meanwhile, we really want to take Boston and drive the British out of uh, Massachusetts, but I've only got one general officer right now, and I don't know how to manage two fronts with one officer and not enough resources. So that's where we find ourselves. We do have 63 reputation that's gone up reasonably uh, in the last couple of uh, episodes if we won a few important battles. And so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to spend that. We're going to spend four reputation here to immediately get recruitment of the low ranks because right now we also have a problem where we don't have enough junior officers. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and see if maybe we can uh, we can start remedying our some of our problems with with the officers that uh, you know maybe we can maybe we can get the officers to uh, replenish our casualties because that's the other thing is even if we have recruits. You need, lo you need lower ranking officers to be able to, you know, effectively do things. So, all right. A group of British officers sympathetic to colonial cause secretly communicate with the American representatives, exploring possibilities for reconciliation and then end to hostilities. Uh, I don't know what this plus, plus five, I guess, is this recruitment or is that officer resources population report? Okay. Um, all right, so we get the 20 officers, so that will help. All right, everyone get in the, get in Saratoga. We still, we need more recruitment and whatnot, which we probably aren't going to get at Ticonderoga. So I, I do, I do wonder if I need to move some of my troops out of there. I also did raise, or I'm going to raise two new companies of troops here at Fort Rice. I don't really have the manpower, but I do want to try and, you know, get this regiment here, the Hatfield Militia. Uh, back up to strength. And then I can pull one of these regiments out and send it to Ticonderoga to get us another 500 troops. I'm not necessarily looking at assaulting Frederick right this minute. I think my main focus is securing Ticonderoga from immediate assault and then shifting some of our troops east, or at least my commander east, to maybe see if we can reduce Boston, because that's the only objective we have on the map right now. Um... I, Using for reputation did cause desertion impact to go not as great. Um, the finances are still somehow in the in the black today. It didn't go down too badly. We could do we could do a copper thing where we get free resources that can we can turn around and sell. How much does six copper? How much is that worth? It doesn't actually tell me here. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, so that would be, what, 1,200, just shy of 1,200? Oh, we, we do have two copper in our resources, so let's let's sell the copper we have. I'm not building any cannons. That's the primary thing that copper can be used for. So that'll get me, give me a little bit of money here. Uh, I need the iron that, I'm, that I have for the building the muskets. Wood, saltpeter. 
cool. I guess we could sell some horses. They feel value. Like, I don't know. I don't know that scavenging, you know, like if I sold all my horses, that would be a couple days worth of resources. Like, I don't, I don't know that it's actually worth doing that. Uh, muskets. We've got some in stock. I really want to buy more brown besses. There's only seven on the market. I guess I can do that with a copper I just sold. Because we do have a couple of companies with brown besses. And, uh, yeah. So I'd like to buy more of these better weapons like the Spanish 55 and the Charleville 77. But at the moment, that doesn't seem like a terribly prudent thing to do. And, uh, yeah. Additionally, in order to fix our manpower situation... I do think we want to increase our salary a little bit. I'm assuming that will reduce desertion rates, but it will obviously make things more expensive. So right now our monthly salary is 2398 or 2 sorry, 2393. We increase the salary to 0.6 and it increases by 500 a month. There's not a small amount when you're running such a a fine balance. Additionally, I do want to uh you know, it'd be nice if we could if we could increase the amount we're paying to recruits to try and draw more recruits to replenish our losses. So we get like a 3% recruiting bonus if we increase our bounty, but it, but obviously it costs more money to do that. Um, let's run one day at 1.3 bounty and 0.6, well, seven salary. I just really want to make sure that the desertion rate doesn't doesn't fall or doesn't get hurt too badly. Meanwhile, we are going to go ahead and issue a, a project to raise additional funds. Congress, you need to give me more money. It'll take 13 days to do that. I don't want to spend 13 prestige quite yet, reputation quite yet. Let's just see what one day like this does to our balance sheet. Hopefully we don't go too far into the red. Okay. But you know, if you if you pay more, obviously you're gonna get more recruits. So yeah, so that we lost a considerable amount of money there. We'll be in the red tomorrow, maybe today even. But you can see we did get we did get some nice recruiting bonuses here at Fort Rice. We're up to we've already recruited half of the two companies that we are setting up there. Providence and Leicester didn't really change. Saratoga, it's nearly filled out. I don't know why these militia have 180 and these militia have 150 as their manpower. Like, I don't know how they're different. Because the Bennington militia have sort of the, the loose formation. Or at least the, the 180 size unit. 150 is a more tight unit, like a standard line unit. Not entirely sure. Um, okay. I also need to raise more units there, but... How are the muskets going? Are we making more than we're... we're you know, the other thing that would be tempting is we could try and sell some of these muskets for, for cash if we're making more than we're actually. But I don't know how much. So it's, is it six per? So if we sell, we sell at nine gold per musket. What's the production cost per musket though? So is that what, like four? I can't do freaking math. So it's a slight profit. It's not dramatic, I think. That being said, that's assuming we have iron and wood to produce. Mm. I don't know how how, how much... How many textiles I make per day? So we use wood 
and iron to make those muskets. I don't know that I need salt. Well, I guess I use saltpeter for production of ammunition, but I'm not even producing ammunition right now. I'm just kind of buying it. So because of that, just for the moment anyway, we're going to sell 11 saltpeter. I'm going to see if I can get one more day at the current recruitment. So you can see we're at 1,600. Just all right, everybody, I am going to go ahead and jump ahead a good deal. We spent like 50 minutes just working on logistics and moving troops around. I moved my general back east while Ticonderoga sort of recouped, and we are planning for an assault on the enemy position at Middleborough. Uh, but essentially, we're jumping ahead like 30 to 40 minutes in my playtime, uh, where all I was doing was sort of toggling resources and juggling resources and money and things like that. So we could just build our forces up and we did that and we moved our troops east and now we're preparing for a major battle in, uh, in the east. So you can see here we've got four brigades, three with two regiments each and one with three regiments. All told, the army consists of some 4,700 troops. We outnumber Middleborough by about 1,200. The hope is that we can get there before any reserves come south from Boston. We shall see. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be what we're going to do. And if we win at Middleborough, then we will threaten Boston directly. Because I, I don't think the British have a ton of additional reinforcements coming to the East Coast. I could be wrong. Uh, we're 14 days away from Continental Army. If we win this victory, we'll probably get a bunch of reputation, which I will probably pour into getting Continental Army faster. And then also raise funds or more officers or something. Quartermaster might need to look at, we've got 42 days left on the current equipment committee. I don't have the resources to increase the size of the force, the, the standing army right now. But, but what we're actually going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we are going to drive our forces east toward Middleborough. We've concentrated a good deal of, number of troops here. And uh, we're going to fight this battle against this enemy force of 3,500 troops. And we'll see how it plays out. All right. Well, here we go, boys. Okay. Let's going to take a step back. I hate the way that the strategic map translates into where units are on the field when you join the battle, because I waited, I didn't want my units to be coming up as reinforcements with the enemy having an early advantage. So I waited till all my troops were close, but now like they just join in this big ass mob and I don't like that. That's, that's not great. Also, apparently half my army is ready to retreat. One, two, three, four, five, six regiments are all blinking white, which means they're retreating actually an artillery unit too. So that sucks. Um, that's not great. Also, we're like already in range of the enemy artillery and crap. Uh, all right. This may be suicide. We're going to charge these enemy guns with two of our militia companies to buy time for the rest of our troops to redeploy because I don't, I don't like, I don't like the current tactical position that we joined the battlefield in. So we'll have 240 of our men probably charged to their deaths. But that's okay. That's that's fine. Let's pull these guys back. I just I wish there was a better way to form units up tactically. All right, let's put these Remember the brown coats are your regulars. So these guys are going to charge this unit, I'm going to pull back here. Okay. Additionally, this we've got like we've just got this horrible tactical position with a bunch of blobs of troops. So I don't know what the best way is to defend here, but I I know that it ain't formed up in one column of whatever this is. So we're going to try and use this tree line over here. I think this discoloration in the ground represents sort of the, the game's definition of the forest. The other thing is, as I understand it, and I haven't fought with cavalry a lot, but as I understand it, dragoons are like massively OP early on. 
So I guess we'll see how that shapes out. These troops are retreating. These troops are charging forward. I'm going to guess they're going to route. Look at the morale just plummet. I'm going to guess they're going to route before they ever melee with the enemy guns. But it would be awesome if we could melee with the enemy guns and... Oh, they're not even going to make it to the guns? And like... Make them not effective? But again, these troops are, are charging forward solely to buy my other boys. Time to redeploy. So, they're going to die, and that's fine. Meanwhile, let's see if we can have our arty all concentrate on one enemy battery. Maybe if we concentrate on a single battery, we can knock it out. Or maybe we should all concentrate on the enemy cavalry since we know they're OP. But let's see. Why are these guys retreating to? I hate, like, again, I don't think they were ready to really retreat. Counter battery fire. Apparently very ineffective. I don't think that all four of our batteries firing a salvo did much of anything to the enemy art artillery there. But these boys are retreating. They lost about a little less than 50% casualties. Right, remember, you want to choose the hold option. It gives you a big bonus in terms of cover. So their troops should be mostly in the open, whereas my troops are not. Meanwhile, it does look like the regiments of mine that, at least some of the regiments of mine that were retreating, have stopped retreating. So let's pull them back behind... We're going to form kind of like a horseshoe shaped position. All right, enemy cavalry is charging into my lines. Oh my God, there's two. There's a lot of them. They're trying to break my left. I don't know. I mean, 240 cavalry seems like a lot. Their infantry's not really coming up yet. We're also in cover, so that helps. Meanwhile, we're trying to concentrate on this one battery of artillery, and I guess we've done a reasonable job of inflicting casualties on them. They're down to... They're down 15%. Why are they retreating forward toward the enemy? That seems silly. Meanwhile, they're breaking a couple of my infantry units, but we did drive one of their cavalry regiments back with not nothing casualties. This tree line here is the core to my defensive, by the way. I know we're kind of moving on the slow speed, if you will. Is my artillery still concentrated on the enemy artillery? Can't tell. Maybe, sort of. It looks like they're... Oh, their guns are unoccupied. Why? They they switched over to just being infantry, I guess? Maybe they can't man all the guns with that many men? I'm not, I'm not really sure. All right. This melee is not going all the enemy cavalry's way. They, they've lost a quarter of their men in every single one of the three Dragoon regiments. Meanwhile, we've shifted some of our artillery focus over to this other battery since they these guys abandoned their guns. I don't know why my troops want to retreat toward the enemy, but... Fire a volley into the enemy cavalry flank. Uh, then charge into their flank. Let's 
trying to extend their right. We'll shift troops over that way. Is my artillery not shooting where I'm telling them to? All right. Wait. Just as I came over and looked at them, they inflicted some casualties on this battery. Maybe we should be focusing on the infantry, though, that's attacking. I'm not really sure. You can see, like, this enemy cavalry here is 240 horse are basically threatening to break my whole flank. Now, we did... It does look like we've probably come close to breaking these guys. These guys are at almost 50% casualties. The other two companies are at 50% casualties. It was an expensive proposition to break them, or come close to breaking them, as far as I can tell. All right, I think our artillery is maybe not well served in counter battery fire. So let's try and split the focus up here on the enemy troops attacking my uh, infantry up front here. They're stacking up on my right flank here. But again, most of my troops are in cover. All right. One regiment breaking will bring in a reserve company. These guys all running off the battlefield. Could you at least try to rally? You know, let's move our general up. He should have been in the thick of things earlier. All right, I think this enemy regiment is gone or going to be gone. Bring our second line of infantry forward here as the front line is starting to melt away under enemy pressure. We at least knocked out one of their batteries or pulled them away from their guns in any event. Another enemy cavalry charge here. Can you guys shoot at these? Point blank range, cavalry, get them. Granted, there's probably friendly fire involved here, but. Fire. Friendly fire, oh, our troops routed. But we, it did look like that salvo of canister did some damage that enemy company's almost gone of course my own troops are deciding that they don't want to be shot at by their own boys and they're they're routing oh this is such a mess they're really stacking up on my right i don't really have any more res oh, i do have some reserves some of these guys i think are rallied troops All right, so they got one company of uh, Dragoons with 40 men left. I think the others are all gone. Our artillery seems to be helping hold the line here. At least for the moment. Our flank is vulnerable to the enemy, weighing in quite a few companies against them. Our left flank, really the only threat here is this lone company of cavalry, which we're expending 200 muskets against.
All right, we've got a bunch of our batteries of artillery focusing on this company of enemy infantry, so we're going to see if we can melee them with 200 muskets. Granted, the morale on our troops is... Well, those actually... The morale there is decent. Okay, there they go. Just shoot a volley against them, you guys. Ready? Can we break their... I don't think two companies of troops meleeing is going to be enough to break them, but... that company meanwhile they're coming up close my artillery needs to help hold the center looks like that enemy cavalry is if not running they're they're pulling back I can't really tell how the casualties are going. I don't think they're going terribly in my favor, but I don't know that like it, the red lines don't seem to have moved too much. They've got a good amount of artillery, but I think I might actually have more batteries than them. And again, one of their batteries is just standing away from their guns and not actually shooting. So we drove back one company here. We drove back this company here in this knoll. Gonna try and advance in the center. My flanks are kind of holding. It's hard to tell. But again, I, I, I do think we're benefiting from the fact that we are notionally along a tree line just south of this farm. Are you retreating? Where are you guys going? Hold. The hold command is so important, giving you that free cover. Doesn't seem like the AI uses it a ton either. Okay. Another enemy company here. See if we can get that battery off its guns also. And those enemy horsemen are back. I don't know what they're doing over here. I need to let some of my troops sort of rest a bit. Probably having these guys volley fire at these enemy guns is not the smartest thing, but these guys are actually not on their guns, so 
I don't even know that I will say one thing about this game is that it does tend to give artillery I think too much staying power in a, in a stand-up fight and what I mean by that is there's a tendency for the game to be like oh yeah so you're gonna melee arty and they're gonna fight just as effectively as line infantry in a stand-up fight which I think is a little bit a little bit unreasonable for the game to do like they're not infantry they don't they don't have well they're not infantry so they shouldn't have the ability to stand toe to toe in a melee with an equal number of infantry i guess is my point Let's go engage here. You guys go engage over there. All right, so we've at least taken these guys off their guns. Trying to get these guys off their guns. They've only got one gun, but we can knock out that enemy battery. That would be helpful. You outnumber them five to one. Granted, you're exhausted. And granted, there is enemy infantry around you shooting at you. So you may not succeed, but, you know, kill one or two of the enemy guys. You got one. Literally just one casualty inflicted so far. Maybe the enemy will... <laughs> okay. I think the enemy shattered their own boys. Granted, my troops rotted too, but that battery's gone. This battery's off their guns. My artillery's low on ammo, which is not great, but... I think that's the main reason I'm sort of holding on this flank, is the artillery. game seems to act like I have a manpower advantage, at least up here. This... I don't know. I need to free up some units. The center is getting pressed too hard. Artillery's low on ammo. Oh, there are enemy forces behind my lines? Since when? I don't know where they came from. I think I'm I think I'm losing it's it didn't feel like that for a while but now it definitely does It's really hard to tell, frankly. The right flank doesn't seem to be going great. I see a lot of blue units that aren't really doing anything. I 
Gonna try and melee these guys. Definitely lost, lost some officers. This is, if we do win this victory a battle, it's going to be totally a Pyrrhic victory. I don't think we will win this battle, but... The artillery really is what... Or not the artillery. The enemy cavalry is what really effed it all up. And the fact that I had like 600 men retreating when the battle started. And the fact that I couldn't really deploy my troops as I saw fit. You know, all that stuff. How slow is their reload right now? Point blank canister into artillery. Oh, wrecked them. That was devastating. Oh yeah, their company's gone. That was nice. Not going to change the battle really, but that was a nice result. This is such a kind of a mess of a battle. I don't know what their overall morale of their army is, but while the red line would indicate we are losing in terms of strength, I mean, there, several of their units are breaking. Hoping maybe we can just overrun their flank with sheer manpower. I got to imagine by this point, almost all the troops on the battlefield are exhausted. Ammo is a problem too. The lack of fresh troops is a problem. There's like enemy dragoons or whatever those skirmishers are in the rear of our position. Yeah, the enemy's getting stronger, I think, faster than we are. Then we're inflicting losses on them. I think we have to pull out. The artillery, our artillery so far is mostly still in okay shape but with no ammo the enemy comes up close yeah our army's wrecked uh charge I think we lost this battle pretty handily. The question is, do we try and pull out now before it becomes completely annihilated? Or do we try and figure out if we can, like, convince the enemy to just give up, you know, through attrition and maybe the AI gives up before we do? Yeah, I probably don't want to let my artillery get completely eviscerated by the enemy. The reload rate when you are low on ammo for artillery is prohibitively long. Yeah, this fight's over. Damn it. 
it felt like things were going okay, but I don't even know. It didn't really feel like we had that many more men than the enemy. It's poorly deployed, I'll admit. I'm not a good tactical battle commander, it would seem, but... Can they canister this enemy regiment into retreating? Whoa! They just routed those boys. All right, let's end the battle. Well, we lost. Um, we lost 2,600 of our 4,900 troops and two guns, so... A little bit over 50% of our troops. They actually lost a higher percentage. They lost 1,900 out of 3,200. Their discipline is why they were able to keep going, I guess. In terms of units destroyed, we had one infantry unit here destroyed. One, uh, two infantry units. So two companies of infantry destroyed. That's it? Meanwhile, they had one infantry company, two infantry company, three, four, five... Five infantry companies destroyed. Three cavalry companies destroyed. So in terms of, like, companies lost, they actually lost considerably worse than we did. Now, I don't know what their pools are in terms of what they can draw reinforcements to. And our manpower and our money situation, probably not great. I'm assuming we can't just like, we probably shouldn't charge into them on the strategic map. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, they've only got 1,200 men left. Their, their cavalry's gone. Let's see if we can win on the strategic map, even though we lost on the tactical map. We don't have any ammo on a lot of these units, which is a problem, but melee ammo I don't think matters as much. Do we just... I'm confused. Did we lose 500 men just out of the blue there? No, it's just that they're routing. Okay. They weren't actually destroyed. They were just routing. All right, so my army did route. Although some of them recovered. The army is recovering. I don't have any... Supply wagons would do wonders here. If I could resupply my boys in the middle of this fight... Again, this is going to be a Pyrrhic thing, but... It feels like we've committed so much at this point we need to try and win. Although I may be just getting my boys destroyed. Some enemy troops appear to be leaving Boston. I see at least 159 men. So they got about 600 men left in this general area. All right, these guys are retreating back. I'm assuming they're going to deploy back into Providence. Yeah, we lost. Especially with 300 or so reserves coming down here. Man, do they not have any companies of artillery? Like, if we really did destroy all their cavalry, though, that's got to be expensive to replace. So they won. They held on basically through sheer discipline. Even though, I mean, they've got... They've lost, like, almost 3,000 of their men. Meanwhile, I've got, like, almost 2,000 left still. So let's get these boys back into camp. 
Still got their 3,500 at Boston. So, okay, I, okay, they got about 1,000 left. They got about two. I'd go again right away if I had ammo to replenish my stockpile. Looking at morale here. The ability to pull replacements. All right, King George declared it's a rebellion. Did I use all my replacements up right away? I did. How do my boys look? Morale is not great. Conditioning recovered real fast. Ammo is not great. I'm going to pull these two companies of militia and send them up to Leicester. And pull one of my fresh companies at Leicester and send it to Providence. But if they really have no more cavalry, attacking them, I think, becomes a lot easier. And these guys don't come down with a full load of ammo, too. What's my ammunition stock look like in the marketplace, if I were to... We have ammo in storage, it's just not in the right places. You're supposed to go in the garrison. All right, so Leicester has some ability to replace their losses. The enemy's up to 1,300, so they are replacing some of their losses. But if I can, if I can try and bring these troops down. Again, what's my ammo situation? Just so bad. I got, like, the one fresh regiment, which I brought south, which had a, f a full complement of ammo. How quickly are they replacing their losses? Sixty a day. God, I need that ammo so bad. All right, so we have. Let's wait till the twenty six and then determine what we're going to do. So we've got 2,800 men. They've got 1,400. We outnumber them about 2 to 1. Our ammunition is low, but not gone. We've replenished some of it. They have no cavalry left at Middleborough. Ooh, maybe it's worth another ass assault. Skilled craftsmen are done on our, on our engineer's tree. Oh, I can assign... Okay, yes, do this. Okay, so I didn't realize I could do these global project pools to my individual HQ commanders. Apparently we can. It, that wasn't clear before. It, I'd never seen it be an option, but that may just be because we hadn't... We didn't have the, uh, we didn't have the free slot open. In any event, they're going to work on low-ranking officers because that's going to be a problem for us soon with these losses we took. I'm real tempted to just make another Sally. We outnumber them two to one, which as a ratio is better than it was before. I have a lot of really shot up companies. We're about to get the um, Continental Army. Do I have any troops I can... So we do have these troops up here in northeastern Pennsylvania. But they won't instantly transfer south, so that, that's not really an aid. I could try and pull some troops from Ticonderoga, but they would take a good long while to arrive. I don't know. 
Let me know what you guys think I should do in the comments. That was obviously a cluster of a battle. It really felt like those three companies of their dragoons broke my left flank and it like a third of my army all by themselves. But they're gone now. We destroyed them. There's no indication that they have re-recruited them. And so I think... I mean, Boston has at least one company, and I think that's a new company of Dragoons. It looks like they got 50 men there. So they're working on rebuilding that, it would appear to me. So I really think the time to strike is before they get those Dragoons back, and I can deal with infantry, probably. My artillery seems to all be in good shape. We didn't really lose many guns. I'm inclined to replace one battery of these guns with our six pound field guns. So we'll do that. Why does it say 50 days? That shouldn't be. Let's do one more day. Let's go to the 20, 27th. Sabotaging diplomatic efforts. Why? Yeah, so this isn't the the ratio is not going to get better. They're I think they're replacing their losses faster than we can. We could pull all the troops from Leicester and make a push on Middleborough, but then that would just open up Leicester falling and sort of the whole interior of our position becoming dicey if they bring the troops forward from Boston. So I think what we may do in our next video is we may we may launch a launch an assault here. I don't even have enough junior officers to raise new companies of troops either. So that's another problem. It's, it'd be very much Pyrrhic in that we could take Middleborough and then the enemy could drive back and retake it immediately if we do succeed. But the hope is that they don't. But I got to strike back before they, before they get that cavalry back. So I think we'll fight another battle. But we've already been going for quite a while on this episode, so we'll see how that plays out in our next episode. Just nonstop human wave assaults. Let's butcher our boys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it wasn't the cleanest battle. I think we were kind of also screwed by how close the units were at the start of the fight. But that's going to do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.